There comes a time in everybody's life where you need something bigger. An SUV is that right in between for the family where you can still get good gas mileage, it still looks nice, and it's still very comfortable and practical. Now there's a bunch in this segment of three row SUVs that seems to be the new trend, getting away from minivans, but you don't have to spend a lot on this 2016 Mazda CX-9, even in this crazy car market. Now this is a signature and it's all wheel drive, so it's the top trim, and uh, I'm gonna get into the reasons why we pick this, what are the features, and why it's a pretty good buy at $25,000 if you can find one in that range, even with some mileage on it. So hello everybody, welcome to Marty Motoring. My name is Martin and this is the new family vehicle. Now we had an Acura TLX that we actually traded in and had some good value towards this. The TLX was nice and we wanted to retain the luxury features and feel just nice driving experience that that had. It was very Lexus-like and I'm a big Lexus and Toyota guy. And when I drove this, I was immediately impressed with the power and the handling and the comfort. Now the reason we even started looking at SUVs is because we have a daughter about two months old and the sedan was just not great for fitting a car seat in there or anything really, even the stroller barely fit in the trunk. And we kind of decided we wanted something with more room. The whole reason I got rid of my Toyota Tacoma was because interior space was lacking and I had a supercharged IS350 and that just wasn't enough room. And my Scion XB that I daily drive is plenty room, but say we want to bring somebody else or a stroller, it's just, it kind of lacks in that department. It's just a smaller car lower to the ground. So we started looking at SUVs and I'm a big Toyota guy, so I wanted to go for the Highlander. I had a 4Runner. Those don't get great gas mileage and drive like a truck. And like I said, we wanted something closer to the Acura TLX. Looked at the MDXs, the RXs. They just really weren't big enough. Didn't really have a lot of features in the used market for the price and the year. Then I randomly landed on the Mazda CX-9 and I started looking into them and I was really impressed with the features for the price and everything you get in this package. And once we test drove it, I was pretty much sold. So now we have a nice family vehicle that we can all three fit in. Car seat fits, everything fits. We get around 22 to 27 miles per gallon, depending who's driving. So let's check out all the features and uh, how I came to the conclusion that this was the best used SUV for us and maybe one of the best ones on the market. So starting with exterior, I wanted something that looked nice, had luxurious features, but not the luxury price tag. And this Mazda was it. Up front, you have a nice grill, you have the radar sonar system built into the, the Mazda badge. It has LED headlights, I believe LED turn signals. There's even some cool lights in the grill. And it just looks really nice and aggressive up front. You might ask, is Mazda reliable? Are they any good? And with their track record lately, honestly, I have to say yes, they are very reliable. I've looked at so many reviews and people have very, very little issues. And moving to the side of the vehicle, I really like the kind of station wagon look, the streamline look. It looks very high end. These are 20 inch wheels with 255, 50 tires and it just looks really good. I'm not a huge fan of the chrome. I would really like some tint up front or even all around just to match because it does get a little hot in the interior, but we'll move on to that in a second. But from the side profile, I just really like how the lights, how sharp everything is and sporty it looks and pretty luxurious for its price range and being a used a little bit older vehicle. And moving on to the rear, the, the rear end isn't my favorite, but it's, it's nice enough. It looks higher end. It has CX-9 all wheel drive on one side, and then it says Signature on the other side because that's the addition it is. There's like a Touring, Grand Touring, Signature, a Sport, I believe is the base model, and Signature is the top trim, and it's pretty much mostly interior things. You get like LED light bulbs, nicer seats, but we'll dive into that in a second. I do want to show the automatic trunk here. And I really like the taillights. At night, they kind of have a, I don't know, Ferrari-esque look with being a circle and a line. And while we're in the back, the reason you buy a three-row SUV is for the three rows, right? Well, when you fold them down, you get a ton of space. And if you open this up underneath, there's a the spare tire and it actually has a subwoofer in it, which is a really interesting design, but it sounds pretty good. This is a Bose audio system. Third row just comes up like that and folds back down. And it is the same color as the rest of the interior where there is a power outlet in the back, just a bunch of room. This fits a stroller. This fits pretty much everything we've put in there. Now we did buy this in Maryland is, and that's why there's a Maryland temp tag. And I am in Pennsylvania, Southern Pennsylvania. 
Now this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo. So this was designed with torque in mind. This thing has a bunch of low end torque for a 2.5 liter four cylinder. And uh, the turbos have pretty good reliability rating. And as much as I hate aftermarket warranties, we purchase it just in case if the turbo ever goes, turbo seals, anything like that, because with any turbocharged car, you know, anything can happen. This is the Sky Active technology. They later put turbo on the badge. This is the first year of the CX-9 signature all-wheel drive in the second generation. So it doesn't have that badge yet on the engine cover but everything else is solid and pretty much has continued on the same all the way up to today's models in 2022. I have a cover on the key fob, but it's very basic. You have lock, unlock, open the trunk, and then panic button. And now moving on to the interior. Here in the interior is a really nice spot to be. There's plastic and leather on the door cards, as well as it's plastic, but it looks like wood around the window switches and everything like that. And then here in the driver's and passenger seats, there's this nice brown leather. I forget exactly what it's called, but there are memory seats, a lot of adjustability, and it just looks super premium in here. We have a cover on the steering wheel, but the steering wheel is very comfortable and sporty, and I really like the layout. Everything as far as the gauges are nice. The center console is up high, kind of more like a car. So when you're driving this, it almost feels like a, a sports car or like a sport wagon. We have Mazda's rotary dial with the volume here and our navigation buttons. We have electronic parking brake, sport mode. There's also a manual type mode and that works pretty well. You got the AC HVAC controls, heated seats, start stop button. And my favorite, this seven inch display. This reminds me of BMW, Audi, uh, Lexus even. We'll start it up here. It's just a very nice screen, really good pixel density and I think it just looks great. And for $100 and maybe an hour of time, I was able to add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with some new wiring, as well as a new hub here in the center console. And that gives us Apple CarPlay and the rotary dial works really well for this actually. It's, uh, it is touchscreen, so when I am parked, this is touchscreen and it works and it's fine, but you don't wanna be reaching this far when you're in the car with the family and you're trying to drive, last thing you wanna do is that. So this is a perfect spot to be able to control that. Like I said, there is a eight or 12 speaker, I forget, Bose audio system, but we have a speaker there. There's a speaker here, there's a center speaker, another speaker and a tweeter, another speaker. I think every door has a speaker and there's even the sub in the back. So altogether, I'm not exactly sure what the number is, but, but test driving some of the other cars, the sound systems were okay, but this sounded really good. And when we sat in it, it just felt like a luxury vehicle. And I was really impressed because I didn't know too much about Mazda before this. And now I'm kind of sold on the whole Mazda SUV with the turbo 2.5 liter. Here in the back, we have some of my camera stuff and the car seat. And you can see the front two occupants can easily sit in their comfortable positions with a car seat still there, rear facing at that. That's really what sold me on it because like I said, we have a two month old and I wanted to be able to get her in there and us take a trip or go somewhere, a doctor's appointment, whatever it is, and be able to sit comfortably for that time in these nice leather seats. Now these do fold all the way down and they also slide. And they also slide so that you can get to the rear third row. Now the rear, the third row in the rear is pretty small. It's pretty much just good for a kid. I wouldn't want to sit back there. And the floor is very flat and up high. So, so not recommended for an adult, but it is there. Uh, we, we just leave it folded down and there's plenty of room. I could sit behind myself in my seating position and there would be no issues. So I really like that about it. Mazda did a great job with designing the dimensions of this vehicle to make it still handle well and still have a, enough space, but not be too big or too clunky. Now being used, this does have a few little issues that I'll show you right now. And those are the only things I don't like about it, but then we'll go for a drive and you can see how fun it is to drive. Issue number one, I believe this is in a minor accident with Carfax, uh, according to Carfax. And this, this uh, adhesive tape on the kind of wheel well liners, or it's just a piece of plastic that's on the metal. So it's nothing crazy, but it just seems to come off. The clips don't stick very well. So that's something I may have to replace or glue in or something like that. The 3M tape just does not seem to be doing the job. And uh, it looks like whenever this was repaired, maybe they forgot to put a, uh, a clip in or something like that. 
but those were the only flaws I really noticed on the sides. Uh, kind of all of them are like that. They're just not on there well, but it's just a cosmetic thing. The wheels look like they were probably repainted, so I'd love to get those uh, sandblasted and powder coated a nice gloss black. I think that would look really good. Maybe delete some of this chrome with a black wrap or something like that. And then with the tint, I think it would just look even better. I don't know why they put chrome on all these models. It just, I don't think it looks that good. It looks like the bumper actually cracked and it's not, I thought it was just disconnected at first, but you can see it's just cracked along the plastic where it connects in. So I may have to take this off. Maybe we can glue it, tape it from behind, reinforce it, uh, or else we're just gonna need a new front bumper cover. There are some paint chips and little things along the front bumper cover just because, you know, on the highway it gets pelted with stones and that's to be expected on a used vehicle. I did forget to mention this has 77,000 miles. So that is why it was a little bit cheaper than like a one with 50,000 miles. Uh, but I think it was great because we got a great price for it and our trade-in actually went to something that we really wanted. Had to drive an hour to get it, but I think it was worth it. With a few changes, it's gonna be perfect and clean. So the last thing will be, how does it drive? How does it handle? Is it still fun to drive? That's Mazda's whole thing, zoom, zoom, having well handling cars that are still fun to drive and family vehicles as well. All right, so now we're in the 2016 Mazda CX-9 Signature All Wheel Drive. That is a very long name. I did forget to mention, this has a heads up display, which a lot of cars, a lot of SUVs in this class do not have. I think that is really cool and it looks really nice. But we're gonna hit this back road here and you can see this thing, even with a four cylinder, it's turbo, it's it's no slouch. With 87 octane fuel, it gets 220 horsepower and with 93 octane, you get 250 horsepower. So this can actually run on both, which was another selling point of getting this vehicle. Sometimes maybe we wanna save money and go the 87 route. I try to put 93 in it when I can, just cause it runs cleaner and it's more fun with the more horsepower. So we're in sport mode, we're in first gear manual. Okay, so this thing handles pretty well. And I like how the transmission shifts. It's nice and smooth. Let's see how it does around turns. Okay, a little bit of body roll to be expected. Here's a 30 turn, we're approaching at 60. Okay, so it handles very well. There are a few gripes that I have. The manual, you have to push up for downshift and down for upshift. I think that's very strange. I don't know why they would have done that. Maybe just to be different, or maybe it's some limit of how the transmission is designed. But either way, not a big fan. And then sometimes being as tall and big as I am, uh, my knee hits this area and it makes it make like a plasticky sound and it doesn't sound great. Uh, it's, it's just because it's all plastic and buttons and things like that and it, the whole center console just kind of makes a weird sound. That's the only like cheap feeling part of this vehicle. Now the tires on here are pretty fresh. Uh, so I would not recommend doing this in the rain or snow, but being that this is all-wheel drive, like I said, it handles well, and it's gonna be good enough for us to drive in the rain and snow if we need to. And that was the other big thing. A lot of these SUVs are now all-wheel drive, and we definitely wanted that because the TLX that we had was all-wheel drive, and I wanted to make sure it, it kind of matched on par of what the TLX was, and I think it does. I think this is actually better. It's more room, it still has the same sportiness, and it's just fun to drive. The TLX just was not as fun to drive. It was very floaty. Um, it had more power technically, but it just, I don't know, this is, I like this upright position. And I like the space of an SUV and the feel. Honestly, if you closed your eyes, which I 100% do not recommend, this would feel like a sports car. And the turbo just really kicks in low. Like I said, a lot of torque, you feel the boost. This thing just moves and it's awesome. Tons of power at your disposal. So now let's move to my final thoughts on the vehicle. 
So as you can see, this three row SUV handles awesome for being a three row SUV in this used price range in this market. It's, it's just an incredible value for what you get. The fixed speed automatic is what I prefer and works great. It's not CVT and it's not gonna have issues like some of the Nissan counterparts. And the engine's pretty proven with the Mazda 6 and other models. It's been around for a while. I think it really just punches above its weight class uh, compared to the competition in styling, interior, looks, handling, power, just everything you could want in a family three row SUV with the luxury look and handling but you get that normal SUV price. So for 25,000, if you can find one like we did for that price with some miles on it and a nice warranty, I think it is a great deal. I also recommend the Toyota Highlander just for 2016. It was the older gen and it didn't really have what we were looking for. So we went with the Mazda and we don't regret it. So definitely drop in the comments below. What do you think of this 2016 Mazda CX-9 signature all wheel drive? Would you buy it? Would you not buy it? Is there something better? Is there something I missed? I'm sure I did, but Mazda has sold me and has a new fan. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow along for more. Follow me on Instagram at Marty Motoring. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep those wheels turning. So long, farewell.